Hello and welcome to This Week in History with Mike and Will. I'm Mike. I'm Will. And here's what we do is every week we talk about history. Will has one hour to explain to me some historical event that happened on this date at some other time in history. Correct. Today we are discussing uh, the assassination of James Stewart on January 23rd, 1570. You ready to explain this day in history? I am ready, Mike. There's a lot going on to this. Oh, boy. Yep. All right. So to begin, James Stewart is not to be confused with American icon Jimmy Stewart. Oh, oh yeah. Clarence. How, how long before we're going to do a Jimmy Stewart impersonation? Uh, under a minute. Under a minute. <laughs> I, I had to get out of the way. And it's probably going to happen again as well, we we'll go. He's just a Scottish Jimmy Stewart, <laughs> which I don't. I should have practiced doing that. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to sound. So, uh, James Stewart's part of the Stewart family, sure, uh, which was sense. a ruling class uh, family in Scotland. Okay. Uh, they uh, ran things for quite some time. Uh, they are famous for uh, eventually becoming the ruling house of England. Uh, oh. Um, and he's kind of in this, this phase right before that all happened. So, um,. James, right now, though, they're not uh, connected to England? They are, oh, and are. I'll explain why. So, James is the illegitimate son of King James V. Oh. So, since he's a bastard, uh, not in a not like Northern England bastard. Like, sure, sure. Don't like him, he's a bastard. It's, you know, he's literally... Sure. Dad Probably comes movie. from the same thing, though. Probably. I mean, usually it was used as an insult. Yeah. Um, but that also puts him directly next to royalty. So, if, like, every other royal died... Oh. He could inherit, but he'd have to like kill every. So they're last in line. Bastards are still uh, in the line, they're, but very the yeah, okay. like cousins first, <laughs> nephews, nieces, grandkids. He's illegitimate, and he actually seems pretty comfortable with this. So, okay. so that's not going to be our story. It isn't like he was this power mad individual who rose above himself and got you know assassinated yeah. for that. I'm sure uh, he still missed out on the father's day cards. I'm sure he did. He actually uh, apparently was. Fairly well treated by his father. Oh, okay. uh, his okay. dad made sure that he had a constant income from his uh, just after he was born, uh, which was in 1531. That's the only date they gave. Okay. Nobody's sure exactly when, because bastard. Right. <laughs> um, Somewhere in there. Right. But he set him up as uh, the head of a priory. So this is using church offices to create a financial benefit. He was the prior uh, of a small parish, and it created money for him, but he was like eight, so he couldn't do any... What is a prior? Is a prior the person in charge of the... Yeah, he's like in charge of the monastery. But he was eight. But he's eight. So he's not like leading services, he has no education, he has nothing to do with it, but he gets to collect the income ah. from a monastery, which made lots of money. Sure. Monasteries uh, had trades that come out, came out of them, they had fairs, yeah. and then the monastery got to take a little chunk of that money. Pretty good money, too, if you're not doing anything. Exactly. And there it's you. also because as a clergy, you don't have to pay tax. Oh. Pretty uh, sweet for an eight-year-old. Pretty sweet for an eight-year-old. I yeah, got exactly. a paper route. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he got a priory. That's what happens when your daddy's the king. Hmm. So, um, was this acknowledged too? Was this like widely acknowledged? Like bastard sons? That it was, was a thing, right? It was a really common thing. Yeah, okay. he never like acknowledged him as like his heir, but that was his kid. Yeah, like he had a bunch of them. Yeah. That was common. Um, and interestingly, uh, James's mother, her last name is Tudor. Oh. And her brother was King Henry VIII of England. So he was real close to so, James. This fellow was uh, real close to he's being important. Really close to me. He's sir, he's in between all of these important people, right? But still has to sit uh, at the kids' table. He's still got to sit at the kids' table. Oh. Not even. He's not even invited to oh, the tables. Do you stay outside. Yeah. Um, but what he wound up doing was he becomes... Um, he takes his position very seriously as adjacent to the family, maybe not going to inherit, but he can still help, okay. right? Uh, so his mom is related, is the sister of the King of England, and his father is the King of Scotland. So there's this weird kind of, they're not owned by England, but oh. they're treated like a client state, and the majority of Scots don't like this. No. Like they're these are a rural hardy people who have hated England for forever yep. and England hates them right on back. But Henry had seen this as an opportunity to kind of calm things down. You know, if I can marry my sister to it, then they'll have a kid and he'll at least be loyal to me. Okay. And possibly a unifier. Let's 
see what happens. Sure. Right? That's What's the worst? That's the goal, right? Yeah. In the worst case scenario, it's like every other attempt at empire in Europe where it kind of just kind of doesn't yeah. go great. Mm -hmm. um, but also, Scotland constantly is used as like a, a reason to beat up England by other people. Oh. So like the French ally with the Scots all the time whenever England and France have problems, like they hire the Scots to raid. The Spanish were like, ah, Catholic Scots should invade England because they're dirty Protestants. Ah, and they, that happens all the time. Huh. And the Scots, not to try to pigeonhole a group of people, but they like to fight. There seem to be a lot of people <laughs> in Scotland who liked to fight. Uh, in the Thirty Years' War, Scottish mercenaries were all over the place, and they were nowhere near Germany, but they were huh. like, ah, well, we've not killed anyone in a while, let's go uh, see what can be done, and they murder everything. Um, and Surely not every Scot. Not every Scot. That obviously. sounds like it. Not every Scot, but a lot of, at least the male population. And it sounds like the female population must have been really tough, because if the male population can just leave and go off in raids, and nobody shows up at, you know, the lady's house after, because yeah. they're going to get shot. <laughs> like... So they're a very hardy folk. And, yeah. and Scotland's a tough country to live in, right? Yeah. So the tougher the country, like the tougher the, the people have to be. Because the, the weaker ones die. It's just, that's science. It's science. 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 Or jackets. Or jackets. Which is science. Oh. Good tailors require well some done. study. That's, yeah. that's, that's science. <laughs> oh, that fur didn't really work. Oh, burlap sucks against the wind. Let's try seal skin. It's waterproof. Mm. Ah. How many seals do they have in Scotland? There's actually a lot of seals around the oh, Scotland and the rocks and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. I spoke more before I, think I knew in, anything more about seals. More I think seals. in Ireland. Yeah. I think Ireland has like an entire little island that's just like covered in seals. I honestly only thought seals were tropical animals. No, no. Well, what do you think all the people no, club know. in, in hey, Iceland or whatever? Uh, that's where the baby seals are from. <laughs> that's where they club the baby seals. I would like to seals. continue to tell you my <laughs> lack of knowledge of seals. <laughs> they so. import baby seals from tropical locations to club. <laughs> They're born as babies in the Arctic, and then they uh, go somewhere. They go else. south. Yeah. I mean, they can. They travel a lot. I honestly don't know much Didn't you seals. see, like, uh, March of the Penguins? They talk about seals. Tune in kind of next week to our new show, Nature <laughs> <laughs> This Week in Nature. This Week in Nature. That's... <laughs> Write that one I'm down, spin man. spin off that one. That's There's no one. end of things I don't know. I don't know so many things. Yeah. Eventually, we'll get to stuff I don't know. Actually, I didn't know about this, so that's why we're talking about it. Um, so like I said, uh, Henry's the eighth is one of these wannabe power brokers in the world, right? Yeah. So he's married his sister off. Uh, well, eventually, fortunately for the women across Europe, Henry dies, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Because he's a, he's a bit of a head taker and a piece of garbage. He's a bit of trouble. He's a, yes, just a spot, <laughs> right? Just a... Doesn't work and play well with others. Yep. And we talked about his daughter. Yeah. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. She takes Elizabeth, the throne. The Queen and she's of England. much more moderate. She's much more conservative in her approach. Not conservative in like the modern oh. terms of that, where it's, you know, liberal or conservative, that kind of thing. It's an actual like the core re root of conservative, yes. where it's reserved yes. in her approach. Um, and she's very much like, well, we're not gonna. Just start murdering folk, and we're not going to start conquest, and I'm not going to start, you know, marrying myself off to these people and all this other stuff. Your impression, like, has a lot of room for improvement. Oh, yeah, that's, that, uh, my Elizabeth is just very... We have too many friends that like Elizabeth a lot. I feel mm -hmm. if I tried to impersonate... <laughs> just, uh, I would just sound like Robin Williams. I think, yeah, yeah Ro Duffer. like a bad impersonation of Robin Williams <laughs> doing Duffer. a bad impersonation. Yeah. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Oh, I'm Mary Old Elizabeth, <laughs> Queen of England. <laughs> I made William Shakespeare famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, keep the so Elizabeth is, is a background to our story, but she is ah. not uh, a core component. Mm -hmm. What is important is uh, James Stewart, the guy we're talking about. Yeah. His half sister is the one that's really important because while he wasn't in line for king, his sister was in line for queen. And her name is Mary, Queen of Scots. Oh. So you've got Bloody Mary in England, yeah. who's not to be trusted and not terribly well liked. And not with a name like Bloody Mary. Not with a name like Bloody Mary. And we talked about her reign a bit. Yeah. Where it was very violent. She had a lot of people killed. Well, then there's Mary, Queen of Scots. Yeah, I've heard of her too. Same yes. time? Same time. Hmm. Same time. They actually, their 
I think they there was an overlap. That's a probably bit. why I had to specify Queen of Scots. Yep, Mary, Queen of Scots. It's very confusing because there's Mary, Mary, Queen of Scots, and then there's... Because Bloody Mary wasn't called Bloody Mary. Sure, <laughs> not to her face. Not to her face. Because <laughs> then she just, you know, yeah. this is why they called me that. Give me that axe. Nope. You know, she's like mm-hmm. the Queen of Hearts in Alice in Wonderland, yeah, yeah. just off with this head. Um, but so Mary uh, is in France at, at the time that her father passes, a bit younger than Scotland had hoped. Okay. Uh, and when I talk about Mary from now on, we will not be talking about Bloody Mary. We're talking about Mary, Queen of Scots. Queen of Scotland for the rest of the Queen story. Queen of Scotland for the rest of the story. But for now, she's just the princess. But her father dies, and he doesn't have any male heirs. Again, bastard. Yep. Doesn't count. Um, but Mary is alive and well. Uh-huh. She's in France uh, getting education. Also, was common to, for, again... Scotland and France get on really well, and they don't terribly trust England. Interesting. So they're kind of... That's probably why they get on well. Shuffling her around, (laughs) maybe partially to keep her safe, also to keep her educated, and also because you marry your uh, female children off to the male children of, you know, powerful lords, right? Right. So he specifically, the the king of, of Scotland, sent her to hang out with young Philip of France. Yeah. Well, they become enamored of each other, and they get married. So Good you've job. got this queen, who's queen of Scotland, and uh, married to the Dauphin of France, the heir to France. And things are looking great. Looking pretty sweet. Yeah. Except this is the 1500s, so illness is a thing, Oh. and the Dauphin dies. Oh, no. Sad times. Poor Dauphin. Poor Dauphin. I thought dolphins were tropical creatures, no, too. No, it's a Dauphin, Dauphin, not a dolphin. It's quite different. What was his name? Philip the Dolphin? Philip the Dolphin. Uh, he lived in Miami. He knew Ray Finkel. <laughs> Dated reference. Don't care. I thought that... Did you say he lived in Miami? Uh, was yeah, it a yeah. Was yeah, that, that a was joke? Yeah, jo- that was a joke. Miami's not even a thing yet. But Miami sounds like a French word... Like it was, there's like a city in France. Miami. Yeah. Uh. And then it came over to. Because there's uh, Orleans, right? Yep. Yep. And that, that, that's, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise you. Although the French my, did have places all Miami. along down there, but mostly not in continental uh, uh, have to look up. United States yet. Because the Spanish <laughs> killed anybody who was not Spanish. I'm going to have to look up Miami and see if it's French. I don't think it is. I don't think so either. I'm going to go Spanish with anything. Yeah. All right. Carry on. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward. Uh, so. Uh, Oh, but it's probably Native American. What am I thinking? <laughs> it might be. That I actually don't know either. I don't. Right. I deliberately tune in don't next know week. Much about tune in next week, we'll and find we'll, out. we'll get to the answer. We'll ask and answer our own questions here. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so Mary was in France, and now she has to make her return to Scotland, which is fine. Yeah, I guess. But the court there isn't as nice. Obviously, Scotland. Scotland's Cold. a rougher, hardier people. Colder. So it's colder. Uh, the weather's meaner. Mm-hmm. France is like. Frickin' France. It's France. <laughs> yeah, they're, we invented one. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe we didn't invent, but we perfect. Uh, uh-huh. And it's it's very fancy there. Yeah. Very nice. Sure. Uh, at the, the royal court. Whereas the Scottish court, they're more like hardy warrior folk. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, they've been burned down so many times by England, they don't really have the money to spend on fancy castles. They're more like fortress. Uh, sure. Not palace. <laughs> it's a much more pragmatic yeah. approach to rulership. Um and since they their nobles tend to squabble and fight amongst each other, again, fortress, not palace. But also, surely, golf courses. And golf courses. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Well, that's... And caber yards. Caber fields. Caber fields. Sure. <laughs> I don't know where you throw the caber. I don't know what you a want, caber is. You know what a caber is? No. It's a big wooden pole. Oh, the log toss. They yeah. Toss it, yeah. It's I think that's caber. just any field in Scotland counts. Okay. They could. Um, what I do know is they did play football at this time. Oh. Uh, because uh, football, there was soccer? A, football? Yeah, soccer. Yeah. Football. There was a, a, a match uh, during part of this story where it, it was kind of an aside, but I just thought it was interesting where it's like huh. James was traveling around. He stopped in to see a noble, and uh, his servants and that guy's servants decided to play football while they waited. And well, because I mean, because some modern day football teams in like England and so far have been around for at least a hundred years or longer. Yeah, probably some of them rooted in older, older stuff. Even. Yeah, but yeah, it's been around a long time. Tune in uh, in two weeks from now and uh, studying soccer. this week in sport. This week in sport, <laughs> followed by this week in nature. This week in nature. This week in sport. 
this week in... See if we get the math on this. All right, keep going. Dude, I don't think we're the ones to tackle that. Do we know any mathematicians? Well, All right, so moving on. Um, so he's coming up, James is, in kind of this turbulent time, right, where Scotland is kind of treated like they're owned by England, and the Scots do not like this. No. Uh, Mary's now in charge, and she's uh, much more antagonistic towards... Uh, the English because she's like a devout Catholic mm. and Elizabeth is a devout Protestant oh so and we've just learned that those two devouts they, don't work they don't get well. on well at all and and Mary is like she's immediately antagonistic although Scotland doesn't have the money it doesn't have the armies it doesn't have the might that England is known for having um, but they're fighters and they're scrappy and it's really tough to invade Scotland the terrain just sucks for any kind of invasion the English have been dealing with this for Hundreds of years. Every time they try to go north, they stay for a little bit, and they're like, "No, nope, it's too cold, it's too wet, it sucks, we're going home. And the Scots kill a lot of them along the way. Hmm. So Mary is not big on the idea of like having this perfectly united England and Scotland. They're separate countries, they're going to stay separate countries. Yes. Good. Well, James, her half-brother, king, king of Scotland? Not, not, not that king. Uh, James Stewart. Oh, this is the guy we're talking about. The illegitimate guy, because <laughs> he, he's the illegitimate yeah. son of the king. Mary's technically his sister. Oh, okay. Half sister. And he's very loyal to her. What's interesting is he's a very devout Protestant. Oh. But she's the queen. She's family. That comes first. And he gets a lot of respect for being a devout Protestant. Like, he goes to a church in Inverness, and which is a city, and he takes down, like, all of the images, all the pictures because that was seen as unnecessary in a lot of the Presbyterian and Protestant oh, faiths. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas the Catholics are like, yeah, pictures, so he can follow like the Stations of the Cross, or we have pictures of the Virgin Mary, or Jesus, or all this. And they're like, nope, get out of there. Yeah. And he kind of makes them stink about it, but he's able don't, to... Don't worship idols and uh, exactly. objects. Exactly. That's stuff. what they yeah. see it as, is iconography. They, yeah. they don't think very highly of this. Mm -hmm. So he gets re respect from almost all of the Scottish nobles are like, yeah, we don't want a church telling us Aye. what to do. Aye, that's great. We don't like <laughs> churches telling us what to do. There you go. We don't like fancy pictures. That's a waste. There's no stabbing. This is boring. <laughs> we like this guy. Um, so in 1557, kind of to like show maybe that he's kind of macho, he goes on a raid into northern England oh. to like further it. And this is a very common thing was raids from Scotland. They couldn't get big armies because, again, difficult to maneuver, difficult to get everybody together, but raids were really common. Oh, so he sure. gets uh, his half-brother, who's a noble, and they get another noble, and then they get their buddies, and they just ride south, burn some stuff, steal some things, and go back north because the English send an army after them. They this send this... sounds like just like a, a, a rough weekend. Yeah. Hey, what do you want to do? Eh, just burn some crap and steal some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And that's kind of what it is. Turn that, grab the thing, we're gonna, I think we're gonna get dimmer, Light. dimmer, dimmer, and dimmer we'll and keep going. But keep talking, no, just grab the cord there. Grab the cord. Sorry oh. for this interruption, folks. Maybe I'll edit it out. Wow. Let's see that part, part where it's with the power button. Do it. Do it. Click it. Oh, there we go, that warms us up a bit. There we go. Right. There we Sorry go. Sorry for the delay. That's okay. We thought about it, it's because this, for those of you watching from not Wisconsin, <laughs> We're at this weird stage where the light is longer every day, but also not really sure when it's going to yeah. happen, and it's yeah. cloudy and gray and weird. Yeah. Probably should but it's getting lighter every day, though. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Today is uh, 27 degrees, mm -hmm. and yesterday it was uh, negative 7 oh, it was. for a while. It was. I was out walking, it was 1. Great, yeah, it was 1. The other day it was 0. I just told my brother, yes, how night how... What's the weather back home? He's in San Francisco. I said, there is a one. None, zero. There's no, there's no temperature. <laughs> so anyway, well, edit all in Scotland, out. it doesn't get quite that cold. Yeah. Usually. I don't think. They, but it gets cold, but not that cold. Sure. Um, but it's it's tough to go there. So he, he's James has done his raid, and he rides back north, and the Earl of Pembroke, who's kind of like the ward, warden of the north, he's protecting it. He's like, I, I say... Could you not burn our sap town to the ground? Yes. I'd have to yes. kill you. <laughs> he rides his <laughs> troops up north, and by the time they get there, the Scots have just disappeared into the thing, and they can't just go and have like a punitive invasion because he's got a sizable uh, force. It'll look like they're invading Scotland. Right. 
and all of Scotland be like, ah, uh, mm. it's time to kill some English. <laughs> And unite everybody, and it'll be kind of a Robert the Bruce, William Wallace thing. They don't so want that. They couldn't stop it, as long as they just kept doing a little... Little raids were little kind raid. of like, we just accept this to happen. I Normally, you have it like... it is like a Vegas weekend, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, eh, we expect some lawlessness on the border, right? Like, <laughs> yes, border towns. And, yeah, you know, the English weren't like, build a wall, because they would have just sailed around it. Or climbed it, or broken the stupid thing, and sure. then done raids anyway. And like they learned from Hadrian's Wall, that didn't really work either. So let's just accept the property let's values. Just accept are the be property low. values are never going to be <laughs> super high. They have like some walled cities. So like sure. the city of York is yeah. kind of seen as the gateway to the north. Uh, it's very well fortified. It was created by the Vikings. When they landed, they were like, uh, we're going to build walls and uh, cover it with arrow people and axes and just." Anything that comes nearby that yeah. doesn't come by boat, it's not us. Kill it. With our arrow people. With our arrow people. Archer, that's the word. Yes, we're here for all the technical terms. Technical today. terms. That's my job. And I screwed it up. <laughs> arrow people. All right. Archer. It's like one of my favorite shows, and I just couldn't get the name. Fail. Edit this out. <laughs> no, he's not going to edit it. So, uh, York has become like this fortified city in the north. Yeah. Typically, the Scots don't go south of it. It's, okay. it's just, there's a standing force there that can react to it. That's probably where the Earl of Pembroke came up from. Um, anyway, so James is doing raids, and he's proven his mettle as a defender of uh, Protestant freedoms. Okay. Uh, defender Good, of his queen and his country. Uh, he's sticking it to the, the English. He's so doing her all name the Mary? things. Hmm? Is Queen Mary? Yep. Oh, Mary. Mary. Mary, Mary. Mary. queen. Mary and James. Oh, boy. <laughs> It Perfect. just it just keeps feeding into this. This is. I'm gonna try. I I I get Mary. No, nope, can't do it. There's opposite sides of the mouth. You can't it's, do it. James yeah. Stewart is Scottish. Mary, Mary. oh Mary. Yeah, I guess you all sound like Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Mary, hi <laughs> <Aye>, Mary. <laughs> Clarence, I'm sorry. <laughs> it does kind of just sound like Sean Connery when you do it. Yeah, there you go. Clarence, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to invade England there. Sean Connery and Jimmy Stewart of Scotland. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, James Stewart uh, is doing all these raids, and he becomes respected by a group of Scottish lords called the Lords of the Congregation. And Ooh. these are the, the Protestant leadership amongst noble culture in Scotland. They're sure. Like, He's doing great in Scotland. He's making Scotland great again. Oh, we like it. <laughs> we like it. He's... He's giving a black eye to the he's English. Punch it. Yeah, he's thumbing his nose at English authority. He's sticking up to these guys that have long thought, you know, they're oppressors. Yeah. England has been the oppressors. They had Edward the Longshanks invaded and killed a ton of Scots, and then his kids sucked, and they're just constantly at war. And they yeah. just, anytime the Scots fight England and, do, and they do well, that's a good thing. They're happy. Um, I like this idea. Yeah, so he, he gets really uh, into the Protestant Reformation. Uh, there's a fellow named John Knox who's a preacher. He's John kind of Knox. like a, a big push in the Scottish Reformation. Um, he wanted, and he was a very kind of an austere guy. Like, you don't do big flashy services. Uh, when somebody dies, you don't do like a big massive funeral for them because they're in a better place. You know, yeah. they've passed on. And now in the arms of God, we don't need to eulog he did He like condemned eulogies. Huh. That was just a thing. He was like, we don't need to do that. He's done. He's gone. Let's he's move on. The soul's gone. What are you doing? Like, yeah. You don't need to immortalize the dead. It's, yeah. Yeah. It sucks that they're gone. We miss them. Moving on. Yeah, yeah. Um, very pragmatic kind of approach. He it wasn't is. like this burn everything to the ground kind of, because we've seen, you know, in our sure. studies, there's some Protestants who were like, yep, it's not Protestant, kill it. And he was like, we need to find a balance. Yeah. Like, he wasn't going out preaching against his Catholic queen. You know, he wasn't going out saying... Presbyterians much more middle-of-the-road yeah. kind of approach to Protestantism. They're much more... And, and he kind of embodied this. So James Stewart really respects this guy. Uh, he goes to his services, and he tries to study under him, learn from him, and sees him kind of as, like, his, his guy that he wants to respect. Um, they don't have, like, a ton of interactions or anything, but it's just kind of like that's his moral compass of you're pragmatic in your faith, um, and you can... Link like you can be friends with Catholics and not want to kill them all. Um, he can serve his Catholic queen 
and you know he can try to guide her on what he thinks and how he feels but that doesn't mean that uh, it has to control everything in his life it's just part of his life yes um that sounds like a good balanced way good of looking balanced at religion way of looking at it yeah <clears throat> so he becomes um closer to his his uh to mary and he becomes a very close advisor she was a big believer in having good advice much like her cousin in england elizabeth she liked having advisors because to just say i know everything oh yeah it's, it's almost that's like saying you you don't actually know it's anything a terrible idea yeah because you can't possibly like, yeah. even leonardo da vinci didn't know everything and he was one of those i know all of the things one of the guys who knew everything yeah sure it's like if one person could say they probably knew everything you'd be like yeah like da vinci right yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, except uh, electricity yeah <laughs> dummy so I, I think they call that a polymath is somebody who knows how to do like all the things oh okay yeah they're like usually like a physical specimen but then also mentally they can do all the things and then they can like they have they know art it's <laughs> just the people you I hate, hate those people you hate those guys where it's like you suck <laughs> Like, you're so good. You're you good suck. at everything. And you're probably a nice person. Yeah, on top. you're the worst. <laughs> and there have been a few of these throughout like history that, like, like Caesar was considered like a polymath because he was a brilliant strategist. He's a fighter. He was a, a leader, a speaker. Um, he knew about art. He didn't necessarily engage in that because that was considered low. Um, but he hired people to do it. Oh, okay. Smart sure. guy. You appreciate um, it. But yeah, a lot of the most famous people throughout history, they tend to be kind of on that polymath scale. Today's word, polymath. polymath. Poly- I think it's a cool word. It just sounds like a lot of math to me. Yeah. Poly is like is multiple. Is that math. Yeah. Polymath. Too? Yep. Yeah. Right. But a lot of those like Renaissance men, yeah. as they call them. The Renaissance women. Sure. There are Renaissance women too. They're less well known because patriarchy. That's a thing. Patriarchal society. Hey man, I'm people. just saying you could have written it down, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> think wow. about it. We just lost our two subscribers. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, they did, and then they burned them oh. at the stake. Oh. Like <laughs> Salem witch trial. Look that. We tune into Mike learns about the patriarchy uh, <laughs> three weeks from now. Three weeks. From now. <laughs> <laughs> <be> fun. <coughs> Let me give you eight thousand years of human history to explain how this all works. Let's write down a new series. Mike learns. Mike learns. Colon. Colon. <laughs> Like a prostate exam? No, the word, I don't know. Oh, the punctuation mark. Okay. We're talking about prostate exams some other time. That's Mike Learns. Prostate exam. <laughs> anyway. Who are we talking about? This polymath, John? This, this polymath, uh... John Knox or somebody else? We're, we're done. No, I've forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know why we brought up polymath. Anymore. Yeah, well, we'll look oh, back so he's become the advisor to uh, Mary Queen of Scots. Um, James Stewart has. Yes. And uh, I'm going to remember the polymath thing, and I'll be like, that! That's, that's why we brought that's it up. Right. That's going to bother me now. We can look back at the tape if we want to. Rewind do. right now, and then we'll stop the video, rewind. Will can can't catch stop his saying. We can just tip it on its side. Can't stop won't. saying. Can't stop time. Time always moves forward. Time stops from no man. <laughs> Get out of here, James Stewart. We're talking about James Stewart, who's not a polymath, but he is skilled. He's savvy. He's smart. He's not quite at that. It's obnoxious how good you are at all the things. But he's he and he. um, There are some some very nice things written about him by a lot of the Scottish nobles that are like he is like he's a patriot, which is a huge compliment in Scotland. Yeah. um, Because that like means like willing to lay down his life, and actually do does things. It's not just like a term they just throw around. He's a defender of faith. Uh, he is a noble and giving man. He's uh, kind of con- seen as like generous. Um, they never insult him for his birth. Oh, that's nice. Like that's it's it's kind of like Scotland is like yeah that's just at Scottish politics. Sure, like, <laughs> there's happens. five of us. Somebody's a bastard. It's fine. <laughs> We've got to be realists. I'm now. sure it happened a lot. <laughs> and yeah, and I mean, other countries try to act like it. Oh, well, we just mm, they thumb their nose at it and they ignore the the children of these important people. But Scotland's like, nope. You're, I mean, you might not inherit as much, but that doesn't mean you can't do things. That doesn't mean you can't accomplish things. That doesn't mean you can't be part of society. It's a surprisingly open approach, but I think it's again born of like being pragmatic. They need every able-bodied person. If you're capable and able to do stuff, we'll find a use for you. Um, so he becomes 
one of Mary's advisors, and he is very loyal to her. Um, and he's trying to guide her towards like this reformation. And because she respects him so much, and she's happy that she's a family member, and he's siding with her despite any differences, yeah. she makes him an earl, which is like a lord, hey. uh, and creates a completely new earldom for him: uh, Moray and Mar. That's one place? two separate places. Oh. So he becomes the Earl of Moray and the Earl of Mar. I don't know much about Mar okay. or Moray because they're brand new and he's the first one. Not the last one, but he's yeah. the first one. And so he's been given like proper title now. So yeah. he's an ennobled, like he's not just... A made up title, but he's, a proper... He's not just, a, well they all are. <laughs> they're all made touché. up. Touché. Uh, and as queen, she can make them up whenever she wants to. Yeah, yes. And that includes, like, it's not like just a name either. He gets lands and tenants and farmers. Letter, and letterhead. Stuff. Yep, he gets official letterhead. He probably got a sword, Ooh. you know, fancy cape, maybe a hat. You know, because there's certain, like, at certain levels you can dress in certain ways. Yeah. Because you're, you've achieved rank, right? Yeah. It's not quite as pompous in Scotland, but I like to think they at least get a fun hat. They call it a tam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That droopy hat. He probably has a brooch with a feather in his. You know, fancy. His, his tartan is very nice now. He's got his own fancy. He's got his own clan. I guess it'd be nice. He has the Stuart clan. It'd be nice to be an earl or a baron when you're not too high up that people care. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Like it's like he's not quite off with his head level. It's yeah, not yeah. his fault. He's just part of society. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's like being a millionaire but not a billionaire. Yeah. Nowadays <laughs> millionaires it's like, hey man, I just I I, I did well. And well billionaires they're the real <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they're the ones taking advantage of the system. It's like yeah, kings and leaders like that you can blame, but you never blame like the Earl. The, yeah, the middle management. <laughs> The middle management of nobility. Um, but well, no, I hope that ends up okay for this James fella. Yeah, I know. Go on. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be just fine. Um, well, almost immediately, he's given a job. He's got stuff he's got to do. So he's he's becomes uh, an earl in 1562, and by October of that year, he has to go put down a rebellion. Oh, no. It's not a huge rebellion. But it's still at work. But it's still <laughs> work. Because there's people that are like, ah, don't like Mary. She's a dirty Catholic. <laughs> And we don't like a woman being in charge of us, and mm. she's marrying some foreigner, oh, and there it is. we don't like there her at all. Kill her! Well, James being the handyman, he's like, I'll take care of it. I got it, sis. I got it, sis. sis. I got you. Whatever. I got fam. you, my queen. I got you. He wouldn't say boo. He wouldn't say boo. <laughs> but he wouldn't say fam. fam. And he wouldn't say fam. <laughs> well, maybe. I've got you, fam. It sounds actually a little better in Scotland. Okay. It's true. I've got you, fam. All right, I'm going to go take care of this. And he does, and he's pretty, like... Efficient? Efficient. Oh. Like, burns some stuff, tears down their fortress. He has no problem doing that. Any questions? <laughs> yep, exactly. Like, this is, this is how we're going to do things in Scotland now. If yeah. you go against the queen, I'm going to drop the hammer on you. Yeah. Uh, and so he's built, he builds up, a, he continues to build his own reputation. And again, doesn't... He's not pushing for kingship at all. He's not, like, trying to do some dirty thing to replace the queen or, like, become her consort or yeah. something creepy like that. He's just like, I work for the queen. I know exactly where I fit on the, the ladder of power. This is my rung, and this is what I'm going to do. And he's Too very much. good at it. He's, yeah. that, he's like the enforcer in all the movies, you know, they got that, that that guy who's like, he's the really smart guy, but he also, you know, like if he unbuttons his cuffs, yeah, he's like, yeah. oh no, he's going to kick the crap out of everybody. He's that guy. He's that guy. He's that guy. He'll do the talking for the boss. He'll do the, the middle work. He'll does all the, the heavy lifting that needs to be done. I forget what actor that is, but he's in the Fast and Furious movies. Sounds like a... a Jason Statham? Yeah, like yeah he's a Statham. Scottish yeah, Jason yeah. Statham, yeah, who right. actually is kind of a polymath. Yeah, there you go. My name... Is James Moray. Eh? There you go. That's probably what I'm like. here to kick your face off. <laughs> <laughs> You've attacked Queen Mary for the last time. Also, I'm Scottish. I. Is that Jimmy Stewart? <laughs> like that him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just raspy voiced badass English guy. Like, well, we need the coolest Scott we can find. How about I play him? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Guess you're the guy. We couldn't find like an actual Scottish guy. You'll, you'll be fine. Was 
Depends on how big of an action movie this yeah, is. Yeah, right? Well, you could use Gerard Butler. He's Scottish. Sure. He might even work. I feel the less you know about the history, the more tangents we do. But I'm sorry. Sorry. No, I, I, I have... We've only gotten... I have this money notes. We've only gotten here. Look how much time. You keep sidetracking. <laughs> um, so he puts down this rebellion, and, you know, he's coming up in the world. He's mover and shaker, right? Well, yeah. he starts to get a bit of an ego. Oh, that happens. Not just, like... And again, it's... It's not directed towards the queen. Like, it's not an aspiration. But he has no problem punching down. Oh. So there's this event that happens where he's going down the main, like, thoroughfare <laughs> in a city. <laughs> and a fellow named William Keith, who is the fourth Earl of Marischal. Probably Marshall is sure. close to how it's pronounced. Marischal. Marischal. Uh, so he's the fourth in a line, right? So he's a... Old, his family's been around a while, they're established, yada, yada, yada. Well, in this day and age, the higher rank has to cede the... Or, or oh, the, the higher rank no. gets to go through, yeah. and the lower rank has to move aside. Oh. Now, they're both earls, uh -oh. but one is the son of a king. Oh, Illegitimate geez. son, but still his son. Oh, man. Close advisor to Mary, James no. Stewart the is The paperwork is going to be a mess. <laughs> Figure out who's... Can... William refuses to yield the road and just basically plows through. This pisses off James, like, Damn. really badly. Imagine how the horses felt. They chase them, uh, this guy, out of town. And eventually he sends one of his men to pursue the guy to his home. They drag him from his home, bring him back to James. They have a mock trial, and they execute him. What? For violating this this code of conduct. What? It he seems takes like a... it that far. Oh man! Like this. This is a you yield. Like it's, did you bite your thumb at me? No, yeah, sir. Yeah, but yeah. I do bite my thumb. Like it's just a mild insult. But he takes it for some reason. But also so like exceptionally both earls. I mean, it's so yeah. The guy I think probably knew that. And was... I think the guy was probably throwing shade about him being a bastard. That's yeah. probably what it was. Is, well, and James, this is the one time where it's like, maybe, maybe that was hammer. a sensitive issue for him. Yeah. Because he Hey, don't reacts. poke the Don't poke the bear don't unless you want to get... the bear of Scotland. <laughs> like, he... This guy's a big mover and shaker, and this other guy just... I, you know what? For all we know, you know what? You can't even say, like, well, he didn't know. Sure. He knew. Right. He knew exactly what he was doing because James Stewart is very famous at this point. He's very well respected. He's got a retinue. It's not like they were just walking it down the road and they bumped into each other. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, my problem. Blah, blah, blah. Is that they why have they, a train of people with them. Is that why they have a high road and a low road? I think, yeah. You take the high road because you're the high class. Yeah, you take the low the road, road. I'm a dirty peasant. And I'll get to Scotland before you. <laughs> ah, you will. But then my men will drag you out your home and have you executed. Whoopsie. That's called. After that day, we built more than one room. That's <laughs> called consequences, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> this poor guy. Well, I don't know. He might have been jerked. This might have starts had to, to paint a picture, though, of how yeah. James handles problems. Sure. And brought up that idea of street lights <laughs> for the city yeah. council. Yeah. You know, it may be a stop sign. Because here. he winds up running afoul of Mary after a little bit. Um, she chooses to marry a new guy. Oh. Well, this choice is largely frowned upon. What happened to the old guy? Oh, there was the the Dauphin. Oh yeah, that's right. He died. Yeah, that's right. Then so, she married another guy, and he literally blew up. Literally. There was a bomb. Yes. That blew him up. That's literally blew up. Literally blew him up. They somebody blew up a bomb, and it was thought maybe she might have had something to do with it. Yikes. Someday I plan on talking about Mary because her story is sure. really, really fascinating. And there's this whole, like, thing of lovers and yeah. it's very murky and some of it's painted to make it look like she's just this horrible, horrible, horrible person. And then in other cases, it's like, objectively, yeah, that's pretty not good. And the the optics of this are not great. So it's anywhere from horrible to not good. Yeah. At least bad optics. Okay. <laughs> at least... You yeah. made a poor choice. Because almost immediately after, she starts courting another lover. Okay. And she's talking about a uh, proposal of marriage with this guy, and James is not for it. He thinks it's bad, because he's an Englishman. Right. 
And he's like, this will not stand. You're not marrying a dirty Englishman. We've been fighting these people for years. No English bastard's going to sit on the throne. Uh, so he has his own rebellion. Oh, no. So after having put down his series of rebellions, he finally, he's had enough of Mary kind of running around. Doing yeah, but Jenna, I know how not to do a rebellion. Yeah. And, yeah, so he's seen rebellions. Yeah. Like, this is no, Don't do it that way. This wasn't great. Here's how you do it. Um, so he begins what's called, the they call it the chase about raid. The it chase apparently about? didn't really do much. Oh, it was kind of no, like he like was it. running to places and people were pursuing him and nothing really got done. And it was kind of this, like, feckless, pointless, useless thing. But eventually the outcry is loud enough with all the nobles that Mary's forced to abdicate the throne. Oh. And flee. So he just does like, he just keeps doing things. Keeps doing things. He just stays mobile. Right. Like, it, it, it's interesting, too, because, like, part of the time where she wanted him dead, he ran away and hid in England. Ha, <laughs> that's, that's the place that he hates. Yeah. <laughs> but he goes and hides out in England. Well, then he Never comes expected. back after she abdicates the throne, and... The nobles are all kind of in disarray. They're like, ah, uh, yeah, uh, so we got rid of Mary. You were right. We didn't really want her there. Can you be the regent for oh. her son? Oh. So somehow he's like out of favor, but because he's well respected by so many of the nobles and he sure. spent years building up these relationships, the nobles are like, yeah, you're the best guy for the job. You're a strong Protestant. You're a war leader. You, you're charismatic. We like you. You know where the bathrooms are. You know where the bathrooms are. We don't have to change the locks because you already have the keys. Yeah. Just, you know, next time you bump into somebody on the street, maybe don't kill them. Like, or do it because it's Scottish. Like, just that's, tone it down a bit. That's, right. and, and also in Scotland, though, they're like big on family oh, sure. honor and blood feuds and beasts that go back centuries like this is still a thing with them they so, have these cl this clan structure so uh, mary abdicated to her son or, uh, or yeah she abdicates the throne for her son who's okay. a child he's okay. like but 17 what does she do months then? old she, she leaves also runs to england oh to stay with her cousin yeah. elizabeth who loves her cousin they love each sure. she takes her in she's like well it's family but mary proves to be very skinny mm. and elizabeth like locks her up multiple times and the end of Mary's story happens significantly after Mr. James Stewart's no. story, so we won't get into it. We will but save Mary, that. Queen we'll of Scots, for another Mary, day. Mary, Queen of Scots, for another day, if only somebody else had saved her from herself. Because she causes problems. So James is put in charge as regent. Yes. All uh, right, nice. then. He's pretty okay with that. He, he, he's kind of like, but it's by kind of a democratic decision like he doesn't just walk back and go i'm in charge now everybody goes you're in charge we want you in charge they call him the good regent oh, okay they refer to him as like g-u-d-e good he's the good regent good so they're the, the nobles are happy with him being in charge except mary's loyalists oh, so sure. mary runs a war for, like he steps in as regent and he basically inherits a civil war oh uh get to work first day on the job yeah so Mary abdicates the throne in 1567, in July. In August, he's declared the regent for James VI. He's a baby. Yes. He's just a little, a little kid. Baby. He's like, I think he's 17 months old. So he mm. can't run anything. He's this big. <laughs> he's... <laughs> First law from King James. <laughs> this is going to be a long couple of years of rule. <laughs> da, da, mama. Oh, They're like, no. oh, God. <laughs> this kid's trouble. Probably had a knife or something. Sure. I feel like that's the first thing they give a Scottish baby. Here's a dirk, lad. Go stab something. <laughs> Practice with your sword. Good. You're going to need it. Um, and eventually this kind of... It, it starts to build up where Mary's like, I'm going to get my army and take back my throne. Meh. Because I had to abdicate. I didn't want to. No one wants to abdicate. And James is like, fine. Bring your army. I'll do it too. Oh. I'm a soldier. Oh, no. So she gets an army, he gets an army, and they meet up at the Battle of Langside. And it is a one-sided ass-whooping. Oh, no. James crushes Mary's army. Oh, no. Just shatters it. He's a better general, he's got more troops, he's better at leading, and it causes problems. So the Battle of Langside was 13 May, 1568. So a chunk of time, less than a year after he becomes regent. And it's kind of this decisive affair, everyone thinks. 
maybe this will stop this this upcoming civil war. And it doesn't. Just had to work it out. Oh, no. It's really? actually the start of the civil war. Oh, boy. Because instead of big battles, then, it just becomes little problems. So James does his hands-on approach thing. He decides he's going to deal with everybody personally. It's worked before. Lord to Lord to Lord to Lord. And he's just going to go and say, are you loyal? Are you loyal? Are you loyal? Are you loyal? This is the king, not her. He's in charge. He's a baby. That means you talk to me until he's grown up. Would you like a pamphlet? <laughs> this sorts out all of the <laughs> rules. Take one, pass it around, read it. Let everyone know. Yeah. Um, so he goes, it, this is a crazy thing. He, does, he gets an army of about 4,000 men together and just kind of troops around Scotland with this m big force. No other lord can rally that many troops in one go. So he's got like cannon and like he's got an actual artillery train with him of like... I think it's like eight guns, which is enough to level anything. Sure. Um, he's got cavalry. He's got scout party. Like, this is a full-on, like, invasion force. And he just basically invades all of Scotland, <laughs> going from township to township to township. He destroys castles, homes, farms. He meets leaders and, like, hands out justice. But there's this great bit. <laughs> it's not great. Um, where he goes to this town to meet with the leaders, and he winds up not liking any of them. Like, um, he thinks they're all disloyal, they're all trouble, they're sure. all going to be problematic. It happens. Um, so he burns the farms, all of them, every single farm, every single building, burns it to the ground, spends the night in, like, the nobleman's tower, yeah. and the next day, blows it up. <laughs> Literally blows it, just piles it full of gunpowder. <laughs> Blows it up. Check out time is at noon. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's not outside will be blown to kingdom Yikes. come. Blows the whole thing up and then just kind of walks up. That's how I do. <laughs> so much for talking. <laughs> yeah. Right. So then he goes he goes north and mm -hmm. meets with the chieftains of the Isles and the Highlands, which they usually don't get together. And it was said that by his secretary that no such force had ever gathered in one spot. Oh. So I'm not sure if it's a combination of all of their might showed up, plus his military, but it's enough to kind of cow the Highlanders into going, oh, you're serious. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, I see what we're doing. Okay. All right, so uh, <laughs> that can be only one, and it's you. Okay, good. <laughs> I like it. You look <laughs> like you got things organized. Got some, you got some plans, and the Islanders like, uh, yeah, just you could not fit all your army <laughs> on an island. So... Um, we're good. We're, we're not going to fight. <laughs> It'll be fine. And he goes to like all the border provinces between England and Scotland and just hammers on them with the same treatment. If a noble is disloyal, like he destroys their property. It's oh, kind no. of like Sherman's March to the Sea, where he just burns stuff to the ground. Uh, he puts down any kind of rebellion violently and very quickly. And it actually goes really, really well for I, him because sure. he does it like this. Well, um, yeah, that seems to be effective. But yeah, when you kill... Yeah, it, but the the amount of like people he killed isn't really listed, so it's not certain if he just burned all the stuff and destroyed their things. But he took prisoners and he did kill a bunch of like disloyal nobles. Anyone who was like on Mary's side, he did his Man. very best to get rid. How do you be the third disloyal noble? Like you, yeah, you, you lined saw up. this blow up the house. <laughs> Even like if he, he's captured three of you, he's, uh, he's uh, you loyal? No, kill him. You loyal? No, kill him. You loyal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, I don't believe you. Kill <laughs> no, him. Oh damn it! But the fourth guy for sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very loyal, sir. He turns around, and kills the fifth guy. He's like, see how loyal I am? <laughs> I see. I don't, I'm on your side. <laughs> so he's he's really heavy handed about all of this stuff, right? He's blowing up, literally blowing up people's houses. Yeah. Um, he goes into this series of townships and he starts like setting up gun emplacements facing other townships with the cannons and having like his soldiers kind of roving around and everyone just oh dear god this guy's not to be messed around yeah. then he starts having meetings with uh, the English going well so here's the problem I have my guys on the border keep bouncing around loyalties between me and Mary not me King James VI, the little boy that I'm taking care of. Sure, sure. But loyalists from area are causing problems. They kind of bouncing around into your territory. I'd like to resolve this. Yeah, he's clean up that border. Right. So the warden of the north, uh, he's one of the English nobles. He and they start having like meetings. 
like exchanging letters and they're like supposed to meet up, talk about this. And he wants to get the English on board. Like, you guys clean up your side, I clean up my side. Yeah. We'll have some peaceful times. This will be Sounds great. reasonable. The king is Elizabeth's nephew, kind of, like a, once removed. Like, he's a relative of hers. So, like, we'd really like some th th things to be amicable. Sure. And maybe you could, you know, muzzle Mary. <laughs> She's kind of the problem. Just saying. Uh, would be nice. Meanwhile, he's also running the whole country. Yes. So he's crushing all these little rebellions, and he's just busy, brutal. But he's also sorting things out. And the nobles still seem to respect him. Like, the ones that are left, that didn't switch Mary's side, yeah. like, they're like, yeah, I, dude, do it. Like, I'm glad somebody's cleaning up the border finally, because these guys are a bunch of troublemakers, and they're always stirring up crap. Like, yeah. they seem totally fine with this. <laughs> Judging from, like, the results of how everything plays out, they're like, yeah, good, yeah. They applaud it. Like, and he's still fairly popular. Who he's not popular with, though, is a fellow named James Hamilton. James Hamilton? James Hamilton. Not to be confused with Alexander Hamilton? No relation. No. Oh, okay. I don't think. <laughs> oh, maybe. It would be very difficult after all of this that's about to happen for him to be his relative. <laughs> I know. So James Hamilton fought at the Battle of Langside. Yeah. Which was like the big, was supposed to be the big. The yeah. epic battle, right? It was a start. He survived. Yep. He was captured. And to show that he was magnanimous, uh, he was one of the captives who was freed. Nice. It might have to do with the fact his uncle was an archbishop. Okay. So that was usually to be respected. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to kill the head of this church. Mm -hmm. Get in bed with God. Uh, it's not a great thing. But James is furious. And then he just sees this guy as a traitor to his queen, to his faith, to his God. To everything, to Scotland, James and this aggression will not stand. So he starts to stalk it, like he's hunting a deer. And he starts in northern Scotland, follows him along to the border territories, follows him back to Edinburgh, follows him everywhere, looking for an opportunity to kill this guy. Oh. He's so determined that this guy's gonna die. So finally, I don't know, where's the town name? It's hard to say. <laughs> na, 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 na. And of course, I apparently didn't write it down. Is he doing this by himself? He's by well? himself. He's, now he's, he's got some some kind of emotional support, I guess you could say. Uh, Lynn Lithgow, like Lithgow, like John Lithgow, yeah, but with a Lynn in front. Lithgow. Lynn Lithgow in Scotland. Um, he knows that. Uh, this is complicated because there's multiple Jameses, right? Sure. So for here on, I'll just call him Moray. James Stewart is Moray, right? James Stewart is Moray. James Stewart, Earl of Moray. Earl of Moray. Okay. And then there's James Hamilton. So we'll just call him Hamilton. 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 Not that one. The rest of this will be as a wrap. Yes. And begin. Yes. <laughs> yo, yo, I'm mm. in Scotland. And that's, that's the end it. of the wrap. <laughs> that's as far as we'll get. <laughs> uh, not a... Uh, I'll contact exactly. Lynn Manuel. We'll yeah. see what we can do. See if Lynn Manuel can write up a, a bit on him. Sure. So in Lynn Lithgow, uh, James Stewart has to go through there. Yeah. To get to this big meeting that he's planning between several lords uh, that are English and Scottish to try to resolve some issues. Got he's he's kind of cleaning up the end of this civil war. Yeah. Uh, he's got some things he wants to discuss regarding border security, so that these raiding parties aren't going on anymore. Uh, and kind of setting up like the beginnings of King James's future reign. So he's got a lot, and again, he's the regent, so he's got a lot to do. He's basically the king, but with way more responsibilities. Yeah. Because he can't just tell everybody all what to do. All the work, none of the he's fun. He's the guy that the king would tell what to do, right? Yeah. He's, so he's trying to do all this stuff. And his stalker, Hamilton, yeah. knows he's got to come through here. Now, because he's an important noble, he doesn't just come through by himself. Right. He has what's called like a cavalcade. It's a group of cavalrymen uh, with his train of goodies. His wife was maybe with him. True. Um, his entourage. His entourage. The paparazzi. The entourage, the paparazzi, they're all standing there painting. Yes. <laughs> Slow down, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Hi. <laughs> I gotta walk back with him. They're on a cart that's riding alongside sure. <laughs> next to it so they can properly paint everything. I want to remember this. No, he's turning! <laughs> Could you turn back this way, sir? Thank you very much. <laughs> In this mick Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So he knows he has to come through this he town. He knows he has to come through this town. Now, fortunately for our young Mr. James Hamilton, his uncle, John Hamilton, has a house there. Ah. Happens to have a house on the main road. Mm. Hey, Dad. So, actually, funny story. Might not be his uncle. Oh. Might maybe be his dad. Yeah. Might maybe be a really, really complicated, weird relationship. They aren't sure if that was his uncle or if, because his, so to, so to speak, uncle and James's mother had the same father, but they don't really talk about who his father was. Mm. So there could be, okay, maybe, that's a less likely, but it's more likely that if there was, if they actually did have the same mother, then he's technically not quite, it's, it's a weird Okay. Really, it's a really weird relation. Either like, way, I, I didn't realize it was that weird. And I'm looking at it, I was like, "Wow, that some sort of family member." So it's has that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. He's related. Like it might not have been an uncle. Might have been an affected term kind of a thing. Okay. It's sure. Very bizarre. Very very bizarre. Um, but anyway, he also has a gun. Who does? His uncle. His uncle has. His a uncle has a firearm. Our gun, now, how popular are guns nowadays? So guns at this point have been, we're not quite to like muskets where they're really well refined, okay. uh, but they are not like the hand cannon where it might blow up in your hand. Uh, what they had was called a matchlock, which is a trunk of wood with a big barrel on it, sometimes as big as like a 70 caliber, which calibers are based on inches, like okay. a percentage of an inch. So 70 caliber would be like... Uh, 0.7 inches, three quarters of an inch diameter barrel. Wow. That's a big bullet. I guess. Um, I think. So he gets his caliber, is what they called it. Um, and instead of putting in just one bullet, he puts in two, oh. which is a viable thing. You can do that. Sure. But it's kind of like real chunky buckshot. <laughs> Loads it up with plenty of power because he knows he's not going to get two shots. Oh, sure. Um, Stands in a window, waiting, like not leering out of it, but he kind of hides out in the upper story, waiting for uh, the Earl to ride by on his horse. Pops out and blam, blasts him in the guts. Oh, JFK action. Yep. Not even like a headshot, because you didn't try to go for a headshot, because these guns aren't super accurate True. at long range. I just meant, uh, but yeah, well, parade Raised, about shooting yep, from a thing. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. So he leans out, fires. Hits him in the guts. Oh, no. Apparently it was in the stomach and the navel. So not a clean, nothing super vital, but the rounds are big and they're lead. Yeah. So it just rips him apart. Mm. Takes him a long time to die. Does not die right away. Mm. Um, but this is the very first time that a firearm is used to assassinate any kind of head of state. Ooh. It is the absolute first time that a firearm is used in the commission of this kind of a crime. Before then, you'd maybe use an arrow, but typically mm. you used a sword or a knife. You Poison. got in close. Poison was really popular. But this sets a precedent. No, no. Of, huh. That's a good way to kill somebody. It sure is. Because even if you don't hit something super vital, he gonna die. Yeah. Like an arrow in the stomach, not so bad. Like people get arrows all the time. But a gunshot, yeah. Different. Plus Anybody can learn how to use a gun. It's super easy. You don't even have to be terribly skilled. It's just point and click. Well, don't uh, oversell me on the gun side. I'm not uh, trying to, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's why, like, nowadays, you got 12-year-old soldiers who are a threat to special forces operatives. Back then, a 12-year-old tries to fight a special forces operative. That's a knight versus a child. <laughs> the oh, child's going down. Are you saying that a guns are a nice equalizer? They're a great equalizer. I guess, until you have bigger mm -hmm. guns. Until you have bigger guns, yep. And drones yeah. and artillery. Uh, yep. Your excitement worries me. Uh, well, it's less excitement and more a passion. Like, mm, okay. more anger. Because I think if we went back to swords and you still filmed it like they film more nowadays, people are like, that was the worst thing I've ever seen in my oh, entire I life. Suppose. I never want to do it again. Yeah. Just have like round, like like one round of combatants. <laughs> they, they solve the problems. Like, our best swordsman versus your best swordsman. Deal. I feel like we feel can't. Like, I feel like we can't go back. No, we can't. We can't. All right. The genie's out of the bottle and all that jazz. The toothpaste's out of the tube. Can't that is the, a phrase. Can't, that thing can't. You can't put it back in. It's just really it's, difficult. It's really difficult. All right. So, <laughs> so James has been shot. He's dying. No. He's he's almost like comatose right away. So sure. they're like, oh crap! What happened? In their response, his guards go nuts, burn the house down. They cut because the guy gets away. 
Like, oh. he escapes. But they're in the frantic trying to stop him. They don't know if he's in. They don't know if he's out. They don't care whose house it is. This guy just killed the regent. That's the same as killing the king. They charge in. They burn the house to the ground. They try to arrest, like, everybody close to the situation immediately. And the first guy they nab is the archbishop. Oh, no. So, James... He's just walking around? Well, he lives in the town. Oh, and he's okay. a big mover and shaker. So... James is dead. James Stewart dies from his wounds. Dead. And the immediate response is, somebody's going to die for this. That's great. All the nobles are furious. The baby king's probably not happy. Sure. That was his uncle. He was napping. <laughs> he doesn't really know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they take the archbishop, they try him, and they hang him for treason. What? Because he wouldn't pull the bullet. He didn't pull the trigger, but he provided safety. For the guy, he helped him escape. Oh. He gave him the gun, and he knew he was going to do it. Oh. They find correspondence between the two. Sure. And he knew he was going for him, oh boy. and he allowed it, and he encouraged it, and then he gave him a weapon to do it. So they're like, "Oh yeah, you're dead." Yeah. Hamilton though flees to France. Bye. He is, first he bounces to England. There's no relief for him there. He realizes very quickly that he's not wanted there. Mm. He runs to France. While he's in France, he's offered a job to kill somebody else. Oh, hey, we and heard you're good yeah, at this. Yeah, we like, you like to kill people. He's like, no, I did that because of my own personal yeah, yeah. issues with this guy. I'm not a hitman. It's not a thing I he's do. Like, tries to be, he's like, I'm a man of honor. Mm. Okay. He refers to himself as a man of honor. Well, this man of honor leaves his family behind, though. And the, the Scots being a people that are pragmatic and also prone to <laughs> quickly oh, solving no. a problem. They don't surprisingly go on like a pogrom of the Hamilton family. They don't kill every single member of his extended family or anything like that. But, but they do make a lot of arrests. Oh, okay. Um, they arrest anybody connected to the crime really quickly. Like that his brother is arrested for holding the stirrups to the horse that he used to escape. Oh, man. They're like, no, you aided and abetted this guy. Jail. There's nobles, jail. Anybody he's related to, like, is dispossessed of their lands, or some of them are jailed. And it takes them nine years to actually accomplish all this. It's, wow. A parliament gathers in uh, 1579, so nine years after he's died. They don't get James uh, Hamilton? They never get James Hamilton. Oh, boy. Ever. He escaped to France, and they can't get over there and find him. <laughs> and oh, France wow, is like... Mm. So they get this parliament together. His brother is executed. Man. Nine years later, they have this, like, 20-day trial. And this is, the Scottish Parliament has this trial. And James VI is probably presiding. So he's like, you guys killed my uncle. You guys killed the regent that was looking out for me when I was a baby and I couldn't do anything. Nine years later, it's time. Oh, man. Because <laughs> up until then, we've only killed the one guy. We're quick. We're almost done. We're almost done. So they actually arrest uh, a fellow named George Hume, who supposedly like let him stay in his house. Hume, Hume, okay. but Hume is not killed; he's okay. just jailed at first. Good they arrest him. his mother, uh, Christian Shaw, Damn. but they eventually release her as well. And four other family members, plus a few other people that were just like associated with. Now they don't kill those people. The only one that I could find that they executed, in addition to his uncle, uh, was his brother Arthur, because he like might have been, like, in the room when it happened oh. kind of a thing. Like, helped spy out where sure. the Earl was going to be, helped plan it, definitely helped get him away with funds and everything else, and they kill him, too. They hang him, mm. uh, which is the penalty for treason. Sure. They don't go all out and, like, quarter him and send him to the yeah, different they're parts. They're not of the animals. Country. They're not monsters. But they do hold these people accountable, even though it takes some time, because they have to, like, plan it out. They have to find all the things that yeah. they need to know. And I think part rope. of it really was that the kid came into his own and was like, why are these people still alive? They killed my uncle, and I don't appreciate it. Now, Am I not the king? Since that time, there have been 62 other assassinations by firearms that are listed as like assassinations of either major state uh, leaders or uh, very important cultural people or very important uh, civil servants. In 400 uh, years? In 400 years. And of those 63, 54 of them happened in the 20th century wow. or the 21st century. <laughs> so there was one more in the 16th century in uh, Holland or in the Netherlands. There's so it Holland. took a while for it to catch up. And it takes saying. a while to catch up, yep. And then there's nothing after, like, 1680. 
Oh. Where uh, William the Silent, that's a weird concept for me, a William who is silent. <laughs> uh, he was a, a prince, uh, uh, William of Orange the Silent. He was a prince of the Netherlands. Uh, he was assassinated, but then there's nothing until like the 1700s, and then there's only a couple, and those are like tied into a lot of like the French Revolution and such, yeah. and then there's the 1800s, there were a few, and it starts to pick up steam, you can watch, it goes from like two, and then like four this century, and then like four more that century, and then 50 something. <laughs> Because guns got a lot better. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, guns I, got a lot better. I, think I see a connection between guns. So that's and kind of the thing of yeah. you know when people say guns don't kill people, people kill people. Well, a gun makes it really sure. easy, yeah. like really, really easy. The, the most way. recent assassination was in 2016. It was done publicly, uh, and it was in Turkey. Uh, there was a man who was speaking, uh, and an angry police officer walked right up to him while he was speaking in front of a crowd of people and gunned him down in cold blood. Yelza, and it's you can find it online like it was publicly streamed it's really shocking and horrifying and i actually remember people like going yep that's how you handle problems i was like what i mean that's, <laughs> you know, that is a way that is a you know, way it's and it's just very wrong so yeah 63 assassinations and then after this we've got uh you know all of the the fallout of that and security has to there's measures of security that have to kind of change um but but that's the main thing is that it kind of normalizes this use of force as a weapon like over time yeah because it's a it's a big moment uh and then james uh his death he, he's remembered as a kind of a heroic scottish figure and what's really fascinating is john knox the fellow who was against eulogies yeah wrote and delivered a eulogy uh, uh, at his funeral even though he was against him yep he was carried to his uh <clears throat> tomb by six lords or five lords one of whom was like a higher noble like a duke i think they carried his body uh, laid it in state, and John Knox, this famed anti-eulogy guy, said this guy's worthy of it because he did right by Scott. Yeah, see, that's the thing about making a bold statement. It's yep. when you change your mind on Sometimes it, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. <laughs> and that was, I think, the only time that John Knox ever delivered a eulogy. So that was yeah. a big respect thing. It was yeah. like, this guy was in charge during a really rough time in Scottish history. He had to handle a queen that was going True. all out crazy, at, in, in their opinion and was doing things that they didn't like. He fought for the Scottish people in a free Scotland and tried to make a safe place for uh, James VI, yeah. who wound up, actually, James VI, became James I of England as well. Oh. And he was the subject of the gunpowder treason and plot, which was possibly inspired by the assassination of his regent. It's all connected. It's all connected. But yes, yeah, so James VI does become this unifier. Huh. That it was all like it was foretold in the prophecy, <laughs> where they hoped maybe Mary would or a child of yeah, yeah. somewhere down the line. But yeah, Elizabeth never has a child, and she makes the son of her kind of backstabbing cousin her heir, James the Sixth, and he becomes James the First of England. Hmm. It's a really fascinating how it all ties together. And without this guy, James Stewart, that probably wouldn't have happened like that. Who knows Just, exactly what would have happened? Scotland and England might have yeah. gone to war. Yeah, there could have been does. all kinds of stuff. But it's it's interesting that this one guy has this huge effect, and he's kind of a considered base born because he's you know a bastard. He's a bastard, but he's also the son of a king, and he's very motivated. It's I, wild. You're way over time. Way over time. Way over time. I'll Scott edit out. it out. I might edit out some of the stuff. Too many James edit. Stewart references. We can't edit out any of it. This was a well, we thing. learned about the first person to get uh, assassinated by a gun, James Stewart. And now, uh, next week, we're going to be learning about... Mehmed. Mehmed? Mehmed the, the second. Uh, becoming Sultan. Of the Ottoman Empire. Of the Ottoman Empire in 1451. That's next week on This oh. Week in History. We're going to find out why that's important. Why does yeah. it matter? I don't mm -hmm. know. Never I gotta read a lot of stuff. Oh boy, get Ooh. to work. I got a lot of stuff to read. It's great. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, like, Thanks, and like and subscribe, and we'll see you next even week. Even if even oh. if you don't watch videos, go through all of them. Like them. The more likes we oh, get, the true. more subscriptions we get. You don't oh. have to watch it. Just like it. Because yeah. then, uh, if we get enough, we can make our address super easy to remember. Help us help you. Help us help you. Like it.